Americans are, you know, more kind of excitable and everything than, than English, English people. Um, but I think we've basically proved that if there are dedicated Star Trek fans anywhere, they're here in England. And we're all just... now and then um, you know and then all take a picture and then you know we'll stop because I'm being going blind basically you know and I'll probably fall off the stage at some point and embarrass myself and you know there'll be a photo with headlines in the sun tomorrow saying something like you know Councillor Troy with her legs in the air you know, and, uh, you know it won't mention the convention you know so um, let's do photos now and then, and then when I tell you to stop you stop okay all right, okay, wait a second, I've got to put the mic down somewhere. <laughs> and then we gave the keys to any girl in red who happened to be passing, you know, with like strict instructions, you know, Go drive the ship and be nice to Data, because he gets lonely on his own down there. You know, and never a scratch on it, really. And then Troy gets to drive. <laughs> well, I think you have to admit, that planet just came out of nowhere, didn't it? <laughs> Anyway, I'm sure the new Enterprise will be much nicer. It's actually quite sad, isn't it, to think it's the first time in the history of Star Trek that there isn't an Enterprise around anywhere. But I'm sure they're building one even as we speak. It'll be much bigger and better and, you know, maybe we'll have Lou on this one somewhere. Um, I can't, I can't, I'm, like, I'm like hyperventilating. I'm sorry, I've got palpitations. Um, I think basically you probably all have lots of things to ask me. And I have actually one thing to ask you before we start. I don't know if anybody knows this. Are Spurs winning? What? What? One nil down? Okay, and it was very nice seeing you all. Okay. Um, all right, let's start question and answers because uh, that's, that's a bit that you all like to do. Okay. Never have left Star Trek. You know, if it had gone on for 20 years, I'd have been on it. You know, it was like the best thing that ever happened to me. So um, I was a bit sad that they, you know, they kind of decided that they didn't want to use any of us. But it works, I suppose, because they're lost, aren't they? Aren't they, really? So um, I suppose if we could find them, they could find their way home and there wouldn't be a series anymore. So um, no, I, I think it's great. I think. You know, as Star Trek's evolved over the years, we've seen women's roles getting much better and stronger, and uh, finally there's a female captain. And, and the amazing thing is, of course, in America, that it's been accepted. You know, they're not up in arms like they were when Major was cast as number one, you know, in the pilot. And, and NBC said, oh no, no, no one will ever accept having a female, you know, in that position. So we have come a long way, and Kate is fabulous. Have, you, have any of you seen it? Yeah, she's really, really good, so um, I think she'll be uh, another great captain like we've had, you know, all the way through. Yes? Yeah, um, I'd just like to say that, um, why did you move from London to America? Why did I move from London to America? I think, I think my agent probably wants to hear the answer to this too, she's here as well. Um, why did I move? Well, basically, um, I just got it into my head that if you, if you wanted to be kind of really successful as an actor, that that's where you had to go. And so um, I just said, like, one day, okay, I'm going to go to America. And I told all my friends so that, you know, I had to go. I couldn't try to change my mind. So um, I just went, got on a plane and went. And, of course, it was, about, it was like the wisest move I ever made. Uh, but I wouldn't say it's the best place for English people to be, but it is, it is if, you know, if you want to be an actor. Do you want to be an actor? Uh, not 
particularly. Oh, really? <laughs> Why not? You can't be bothered, I wasn't. All right, all right. <laughs> Um, directed two episodes, and then he refused to ever come back because he said we were too rowdy. <laughs> so I don't know if he'd have come back in the seventh season when we were like uncontrollable. I don't know what he would have thought. But of course, because we were bad, and there was this kind of rumor out in Hollywood that directors didn't want to work with us because we were so undisciplined. Um, uh, when we found out that Major was going to be my mum, we all kind of went, <gasps> the boss's wife, you know. <laughs> oh, we're going to be good. And then she came onto the set and we saw she was actually loonier than the rest of us put together. <laughs> you know, so... Uh, it's been, over the, over the seven years, one of my biggest joys has been um, the relationship that I developed with the Roddenberries. And Major calls me daughter. And I call her mum, and um, it's uh, it's a really, really we have a really great friendship. So uh, I'm one of the best things that happened on the show. Light, light. Over here, Marina. Okay, okay. Hello. And there was Ensign Rowe. what was wrong with everything. She knew how to fix it. <laughs> I mean, I swear, when she was under, you know, the console thing with a, you know, 24th century screwdriver or whatever it was she had in her hand, I just wanted to kick her. <laughs> but, of course, you know, that's the big difference between Deanna and Marina, you know. Deanna was very sweet, you know, and at the end of the episode she goes, well, you know, you were right. Oh, actually, no, she said, you could have been right, didn't she, you know. Marina would have gone, no, 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 I was So, my hope is that one day I will be captain, but not in charge of those people that you're never going to see again. I mean, in charge of the real people, you know. So I suppose I'd have to be an admiral to be, you know, over Patrick, over Picard, you know, Admiral Troy. And then, you know what I'd do? I'd say, Captain. And then he'd give me his advice. And then I'd ignore it like he did for me for seven years. <laughs> Uh, welcome to the arena. Thank you. Um, I've got a question to ask. I'd just like to say uh, that the show, and your character in particular, uh, have given me a lot of pleasure and joy in watching Well, we don't really want to get into that, do we, actually? <laughs> okay, um, my question. Um, <laughs> Excuse me, one other suggestion. Try not to be funnier than me, would you? Thank you. Um, yes. Okay, my, my question is um, whether you find it difficult to breathe in those bigger hugging type <laughs> sets of costumes that you wear. <laughs> and and do, you, do you get a say in what you wear and who you kiss and how you kiss? No, I don't get a say in what I wear at all, actually. Um, and of course, uh, they were tight. And I, I think I've said before that the, uh, the only good thing about Star Trek ending was that I could breathe out after seven years. It, it, was, it was hard because you can't, you know, put on... Well, I did, I guess I kind of did put on an ounce or two, but uh, anything else, and, you know, you can't wear the outfit. But I, I have to admit, I used to have, like, the big outfits, you know, and the smaller outfits. Like, most girls have two wardrobes, don't they? You know, when you're thin and then when you're not thin. So, um, Troy time had two wardrobes too. Um, my favourite, my favourite outfit, um, for a, a peculiar reason actually, was the green dress. It was my second favourite outfit actually, because the underwear was so fantastic. I had to wear a corset, because, not because I had to be held in, but because in the 24th century, we are wrinkle free. 
which is why all the boys do the Picard manoeuvre. <laughs> Remember that? Okay. Um, the other thing, I don't know if you know how the corsets work, girls. They push everything either up or down, right? Well, what was pushed down was obviously hidden under that swirly skirt, and what was pushed up was enclosed in what I have called the industrial strength Starfleet regulation brassiere. <laughs> because <clears throat> every woman on Star Trek now wears this bra. I mean, not the same bra, we got more than one, you know. Uh, I, think, I think it's because they would see me coming in as me in the morning, you know, and then they'd see me two hours later as Troy, and they would go, I want a bra like that. Adds inches, you know. Saves you a fortune in cosmetic surgery, you know. Of course, it is depressing at the end of the day when you take it off. You know, you kind of go. Where'd they go? You know, but um, it was great for the underwear. My personal favourite uniform, though, was the regulation spacesuit that I wore at the end. Um, the thirties. Could you please explain to me? Why Deanna went out with Worf instead of Riker? <laughs> what was that all about? Was it something I said? Is it the beard? I love him. I love him to death. Hi, Johnny. Hello, Imzadi. I love you. Nice room, huh? Yeah, great room. <laughs> See you later. See you later. <laughs> just saw Beauty and the Beast once too many times. Um, I, actually, I actually don't, I could never understand why that happened. I did always have in my heart the hope that Troy and Riker would get together, you know, finally. Um, we, we, we actually, Jonathan and I were plugging for a long time a sequel to, to Star Trek, you know, The Next Generation, before we knew about DS9 and Voyager. We thought the next, you know, series should be The Rikers in Space. <laughs> a wacky half-hour situation comedy, you know, and we'd actually talked to Brent and he said, you know, zany Uncle Data would come and visit every now and again. Um, I don't know, I mean, this whole thing between Troy and Wolf I found very disturbing. I mean, I thought we had established very early on in, in the series that, um, how can I put this, you know, in mixed company, that um, a human female wasn't um, adequate for a Klingon male, didn't we? Um, of course, I said this to Michael Dawn, who basically had been trying to get his lips on mine for seven years. Um, I said, you know, it doesn't make sense, Michael, and he said, well, you're not all human, you're half Betazoid. And I said, oh, yes, well, I just wasn't aware it was that half, that's all. <laughs> so, um, I hope one day, I don't know what's gonna happen in the movies, don't ask me. Um, we don't see the movies until, you know, we virtually start shooting them. But I, I, I suppose that the Troy Wolf thing might continue. I was a bit concerned about the fact that she was dead in the last episode. You know, that was a worry, you know. <laughs> but of course, it doesn't matter if you die on Star Trek. We killed Denise twice and she still came back. <laughs> I want you to write lots of letters, you know, and get me back, all right? I mean, don't put, you know, Marina told us to write. That's not going to work. But uh, please, please do that. I want to be in it as long as I can. Yes. Good evening. Why the hell are you called Mighty Mouth? Why am I called... Oh, no. Oh, all right. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah, he called me Marina the Mouth, yes. Well, that's because 
as I tell you the truth, you see. You see, they tell you the stuff that they think you want to hear, you know, because they want you to like them. <laughs> you know. But, you know, I've always had this reputation, and I get in trouble, actually, I do get in a lot of trouble, because I do tell you the truth. Um, because I really don't care if you like me or not, you know. Um, <laughs> no, that's not true, but uh, I do in America. But, um, you know, it's not like you all come into my house tomorrow, you know. But uh, that's why, it's because I tell little secrets about people that they don't want, you know, you to know. general dirt like there isn't much on apart from the fact that you know Michael Dawn can get a girl's phone number in like 10 seconds <laughs> like, it's like he can go from hello to a lunch date you know in 10 minutes he's, he's a bit of a you know flirt um, <laughs> putting it nicely isn't it uh, it's funny at the, the uh, party this big bash party we had after the premiere I spotted her you know as soon as I walked in I said there she is there she is, that's the one. He'll be chatting her up by the end of the evening, you know. And of course, I was right. <laughs> oh, hi, me! Is it your... Calispera, Marina. Calispera, diganis. Muli calasi. Cala. It's Greek. We've heard a few minutes ago that you played in the Rocky Horror Picture Show. In Rocky the... Horror Show. I'm not old Rocky enough Rocky to have been show in the movie. movie. Okay. Yes. Um, would you like to do something like that again? In the future time? I'd love to do. Uh, the Rocky Horror Show, I kind of regard as my training for Star Trek. Because we... <laughs> yeah. Because we went to Munich, and in Munich, it was like the Beatles had arrived um, in the explosion, you know, that happened. Um, the girl that was, you know, when the girl that was driving got exploded, and Riker said, you know, take the wheel, or whatever it is, on the Enterprise, Troy. <laughs> What is it? The hell, right? Take the hell, you know. <laughs> well, I don't know, you know, take whatever. And I rushed forward and I sat down and my chair was on fire. <laughs> um, so I'm like, oh, ow, oh, ouch, ouch. And David Carson said, cut, cut, Marina, what's the matter? I said, my bloody chair's on fire. <laughs> in my spacesuit. <laughs> so of course he said, okay, well we've got to do it again because of you, you know. <laughs> and doing it again didn't mean just let's do it again. They kind of had to put everything back together again, you know, and set all the explosives again. And so three hours later, you know, <laughs> take two. So Riker said, Troy, take the helm. And I rushed forward and I thought, well, I'm not doing this again. And I wiped the chair down. <laughs> cut out of the movie. Um, the other thing I really hated, really, really, really hated, was the mud bath. It was horrible. Now, if you say mud bath to a person, especially to a woman, she's going to think, ooh, you know, health farm, soothing, therapeutic mud, you know, I'll get in, I'll come out, my skin will be all nice and soft and smooth, you know. This wasn't that type of mud. This was the type of mud that the girls wrestle in at the Tropicana in Hollywood. <laughs> and I think it was used <laughs> because it had bits, indescribable bits floating around in it. I mean, I was like, oh, you know. Plus, to sit next to a naked Klingon in that stuff, you know, <laughs> no, it's not an owl, it's a ew, because, you know, don't ask me why he had that stupid grin on his face the whole scene. <laughs> so I suppose that goes down as the most unpleasant experience. Yes. They said, well, you know, you can't be British because the captain's British, and he's more important than you. <laughs> and at the time, because I was just so grateful, you know, to have the job, I didn't like to say, well, 
Why the hell should I do an accent? He's supposed to be French. <laughs> you know, and looking at Star Trek over the years, I was actually, I shouldn't say this, but quite delighted to find that by the 24th century, there are no more French-speaking people left in France. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, I can't do that one in Canada. Um, <laughs> can't do that one on that side either. Uh, so I, I couldn't actually ever figure out when we heard about the tunnel being built, you know, over, over in America. It's like, why? <laughs> <laughs> they don't like them. We don't, you know, they don't like us. We don't like them. What are we doing? Joining, joining each other up, you know, together. And then I realised, of course, in Star Trek history, it's because we basically go over there and take over and infiltrate and do all that stuff. And, you know. <laughs> buy our lamb, right? <laughs> Just buy those poor little veal cows, don't they? Yeah. Oh. Boom. Right. Okay, we'll get off the political stuff, shall we? Okay, hello. Hi, ciao, ciao, bella. Oh, thank you. For all the guys in the audience. Um, you've heard the barricade earlier, uh, the fact that you're an avid Spurs fan, as I am, and I hope that they're not one nil down and we've equalised all of them. In the 24th century, Assuming, of course, that Arsenal no longer exists because they're boring. <laughs> <laughs> Who got sent off this, yesterday? This is a very intelligent human being, I have you know. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you wanted a holiday programme, so let's summon up this Spurs team that you would like to see play. Oh, gosh. Well, my favourite Spurs team um, was the team, I suppose, in the, uh, was it mid-70s? Um, Brooks and Archibald. What? It was Brooks like, and Archibald. Brooks and Archibald, Brooks, yes. Yeah. Actually, Hoddle. Uh, Hoddle. Actually, I even remember Chivers, if you can go back that far. Yes, I did. What? Shut up! Yes, they did win the lot then. They won the League Cup twice and they won the UEFA Cup as well. Exactly. Excuse me. <laughs> So when um, we used to have to feel that the ship had been, you know, hit by a, you know, torpedo or whatever, we used to, you know, say, okay, shake to the right, shake to the left, you know. Patrick and I would sit there going. <laughs> no, 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 more, more, you know. Um, finally, of course, after seven years, we ended up shaking with the best of them, you know. <laughs> I thought I was always actually a bit better at it than Patrick, because of course I had the hair to go side to side. <laughs> but that, that was actually the, the most difficult thing to do, because you just feel so ridiculous, you know, doing it. Um, but there was never anything really hard. Uh, but then I didn't usually have to do the action stuff. You know, I, I, I was safe in my office with that computer that only had one button. <laughs> but it did everything, you know. So I can't, there isn't really something really hard that I did. Unless you can think of something, because we did do 173 episodes. No. <laughs> yes. Hello, Marina. Hello. Right, over the past seven years, who did you find difficult, most difficult to work with? Um, okay. The guest stars that arrived without knowing their lines. And you just want to kill them. You know, because they're only there for a week. And you're there for 10 months, play practical jokes on each other. It's actually not true. Um, we like each other too much. I, I've got a feeling that you only play practical jokes on the people that you really don't like very much underneath. Um, but he is like the funniest person around on the show, um, as you know from seeing him today. Um, there was one thing that he did, though, which I'm, I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt that it was a practical joke. And that was, um, I have to explain, I have a little dog called Skilagi, which means little dog in Greek, right? 
which is a really cute name everywhere except Greece, <laughs> where they say, what's your dog called? And you go, dog. He's, to he's a toy, Yorkshire Terrier, they call it. I mean, toy as in small, not stuffed, you know, not that crazy. Um, actually, the funniest thing is seeing Patrick, because you know Patrick's from up north originally, from Yorkshire, yes, talking to, talking to Skilluggy in this broad Yorkshire dialect, convinced that Skilluggy understands everything he's saying, you know. Um, but I used to take Skilluggy to work with me if, if there was going to be nobody at home and I knew that I was going to be at work for 15 hours, you know, that day. So I would take him to work. I mean, he was really, really good, you know, really very good actually about, you know, not making a noise and stuff like that. Except one day, I think it was early on, I was in a scene that Brent wasn't in. So I went to Brent and I said, you know, Brent, Skilaggy doesn't really like being locked up in my trailer when I'm not there. Would you mind kind of babysitting, you know, while I go off and do this scene? He said, yeah, yeah, just bring him to my trailer. Yeah. So I took him, you know, to Uncle Brent's trailer. Strict instructions, you know, don't do a whoopsie on Uncle Brent's carpet. And then, you know, I left him about 20 minutes later, I'm coming back. And because, you know, I don't have children, so this is my child substitute, I'm running to the to the trail, I'm like, Skilagi, because Troy runs like this, and it's just Skilagi, Skilagi, it's mommy. And I get to the door of Brent's trailer, and he's putting Skilagi into the microwave. 